standing today on what many would consider to be hallowed ground. We're in a place called New Philadelphia. It's located in Pike County, Illinois, not very far from the community of Barry. I'll tell you a little bit about Pike County and about New Philadelphia. But in particular, to tell this story, I need to say a little bit about my own background. I'm a college professor. I've been teaching history for the past 24 years at Eureka College. My specialization in history is African American history, with in particular a special focus on the history of slavery, abolition, emancipation. One of the reasons that we're here at New Philadelphia is because the story of what happened in this place is so unique to the story of African American history, but it's also unique to the story of American history in general. Frank McWhorter was born a slave in South Carolina. But he was able to purchase his freedom. He was able to purchase the freedom of many of his family members. Eventually, Frank McWhorter moved to Illinois in 1829. In 1836, he was able to plat a town here at New Philadelphia. He was the first African American to ever do so. He became known as Free Frank. And the community that Frank McWhorter created at New Philadelphia was a truly remarkable place because what he envisioned was a community that many could not imagine in 1836. It was a community that was going to be multi-ethnic, multi-racial. It was going to bring people together. It was going to be, in many respects, almost a utopian kind of community where people could work together, form together, prove that the social mores of their time, that people thought divided them, were really false beliefs, that people could live together, work together in harmony. And Free Frank's community was able to do that. It survived, it flourished, it thrived. People learned so much from New Philadelphia. In particular, a young aspiring writer, a man named Samuel Clemens, probably learned many of his ideas about social justice and racial justice in American society by knowing that just a few miles from his home in Hannibal, Missouri, there was this place called New Philadelphia where black and white residents lived together, worked together, thrived together. Now just stop and think for a second what the lesson of New Philadelphia can teach us. In so many respects, we have been taught that there are divisions that exist among us, divisions that separate us. Those divisions might be based on ethnicity, they might be based on class, they might be based on sexual orientation, they could be based upon gender, they could be based upon a whole lot of things. And let's be honest about it. One of the greatest divisions that we often hear is the division of the red states and the blue states, the division of Republicans and Democrats, the idea that some would say we have two Americas. Well, the truth of the matter is we have always been one America, one nation. We have always prided ourselves on the belief that out of our diversity comes tremendous strength. We've always prided ourselves on the belief and the understanding that we are stronger when we work together, that together we can accomplish more. In recent years in American political life, we have seen a horrible divide that has come to exist between Republicans and Democrats, a divide between the left and the right. And you have to ask yourself, what has happened to the middle? The middle is where the common sense solutions can be found. The middle is where people of good faith can come together to talk about ideas, to find solutions to problems that so many seem to believe are intractable. You see, in Free Frank's day, people believed that you couldn't move beyond the narrow confines of the time, that you had to live within those social mores that said that we were a divided society. But Frank proved that we could try something different, that we could dream, that we could aspire, that we could try to do things that were different. If we believed in change, we could make change happen. Frank lived that dream, proved that dream, made it possible in this place. What we face today is the same kind of question. Do we believe that our differences are only going to divide us and perpetually divide us? Or do we believe that it's possible that we can find common ground? That we might not be able to create a perfect utopia. We might not be able to create an ideal state. But what we can do is find a place where individuals of good faith are willing to come together, to talk, to deliberate, to find common solutions. You see, New Philadelphia was founded in 1836 for a particular reason. We need to find our own New Philadelphia today. We need to find the place where, like our founders who gathered in Philadelphia to create not only a Declaration of Independence, but a Constitution, where our founders created a 
system that they thought was going to be the machine that would go of its own, the perfect system. You see, our system is not broken unless we allow it to be. Our new Philadelphia can be our resolution that what we do is we find a way to make American government more functional, more efficient, more practical, a system where people will work together, where they're willing to go beyond the confines of their time. You see, Frank had a dream, lived it. Many of us today share a similar kind of dream. We're not ready to give up on a system. We're not ready to say that it's broken. We want to work to find solutions. I'm asking you today to join that particular movement. Let's find our own new Philadelphia. Let's find our own way that we can reinvigorate and rethink the ideas that were so influential in forming our system. Let's find a way to make it work once again for all of us. That's what we the people have to do. That's what we the people at New Philadelphia have to do. It takes resolution on our part. 